November's election is just days away. We are following some important races. All five congressional seats are up for grabs. All are incumbents and are Democrats. We will hear from the heads of the Republican and Democratic parties on what issues are important and what's being done to get unaffiliated voters to vote for certain candidates. And what about the presidential race? Will that help or hurt those running for office? And we've heard from many of you who are upset over high electric bills. The chairman of Pura, the state's regulatory authority, joins us to answer some of your concerns and will explain how new legislation could help keep rates down. That's all this Sunday, October 11th, 2020. From Eyewitness News, Connecticut's most watched local political program, this is Face the State. Good morning. We are in the final stages of campaigning before the election, and we start this morning with the state's congressional races. Could there be any upsets? And joining us on Face the State this morning, Nancy DiNardo, the chairwoman of the state Democratic Party. We're also joined by J.R. Romano, the chairman of the state Republican Party. And we want to thank you so much for joining us here on Face the State. Thank you for inviting us. Nancy yes, DiNardo. Nancy, let's start with you. Uh, you know, Connecticut, a strong democratic state. Mo much of these, uh, many are thinking that these incumbents have a very good chance, but I'm hearing that in the fifth district, Johanna Hayes could be in a little bit of trouble given the fact that that district is uh, conservative, certainly in many parts. I'm not concerned about Johanna. I think she has done a great job in the two years that she has been there. She certainly has been back in the district uh, and responding to, con to constituent needs. And uh, she has done a great job. And while there's a lot of small towns in that district, you also have some big cities that um, will certainly come out and support Johanna. JR, do you agree with that? Well, I think, uh, you know, Republicans have to, and, and anyone out there has to remember one of the first promises that Johanna uh, promised uh, two years ago was to not vote for Nancy Pelosi. And that's exactly what she did when she went to Congress. So. I think there's some voters out there that are going to remember that. Uh, but remember, in that uh, congressional district, particularly Danbury in New Britain, they'll vote for for Republicans. Um, so I think, you know, this is, you know, I agree with you. I think it's going to be close on election night. Um, but, you know, one of the first things Johanna did as a congresswoman was break a promise she had made on the campaign trail. One of the things that we keep hearing in this race over and over in District 5 is uh, President Trump's impact. And uh, her Republican challenger, David Sullivan, uh, keeps uh, saying that Johanna Hayes could be in trouble simply for the fact that she votes very leftist. She always supports Pelosi, EOC in, in Congress. Uh, do you think, Nancy, that that could have uh, a negative effect on her running? No, um, I, I don't think it'll have a negative effect on her. I mean, Donald Trump has uh, had the pandemic and he, that's one of the biggest failures that any president has ever had in his handling of uh, the pandemic. And that's the number one issue on people's minds. And certainly uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act with uh, protection against pre-existing conditions, you know, those are all important issues to people. Uh, not that she supported Nancy Pelosi after she had met her and realized how important it was to have uh, consistency in, you know, the House. So it's what's relevant to people. And Johanna has been there for people. So no, I don't see that as a problem. JR, what do you think is important for voters? What are you hearing uh, from uh, some of the candidates and also constituents that they're focused on? I mean, obviously, COVID has to be huge and people are concerned about that. Uh, but what do you think uh, is important and what's going to push this election one way or another? Well, I mean, there's so many things, you know, I, I hear a lot that people hate this idea of a career politician or someone who kind of gives a political answer. And that's that's exactly what Johanna did on her vote for Nancy Pelosi. Um, and then therefore, she's now voting, to your point, with these very uh, extreme views. And so what it boils down to is, is that jo does Johanna represent the entire district, which is a district that is Republican and Democrat alike? Or is she simply just another uh, talking head and and politician that's going to do the bidding of 
uh, say, just the Democrat Party. And, and that's basically what we're seeing from Johanna is doing the bidding, not standing up for the district as a whole, but simply voting for whatever the Democrat Party in, in Washington, D.C., particularly Nancy, uh, particularly uh, Nancy Pelosi wants. I want to focus on unaffiliated voters. Connecticut has a lot of them, a lot of independents. Nancy, how do you think uh, those way? Does uh, have you done a lot of focus or trying to get those candidates or those people who are not attached to any party to vote Democrat? Yes, um, I think a number of our state uh, Senate and state representatives, as well as our congressional people, have been reaching out to the unaffiliated voters and talking to them and making sure that, um, you know, they understand their positions and that they will come out and vote. I mean, we have seen an amazing number of voter involvement around the country. I mean, I think right now there's been about a half a million absentee ballots uh, returned, the applications returned, and there's been over 82,000 of them already processed. And our candidates have contacted door to door over 100,000 voters and um, over 200,000 by phone and by text, many of them being unaffiliated voters. And I think unaffiliated voters understand. Again, I get back to the fact that COVID is one of the number one issues in pre existing conditions and making sure that their insurance covers them equally on pre existing conditions. And um, all voters are upset that Trump has refused to do anything about that. JR, Nancy DiNardo touched on the absentee ballots. We've heard a lot about those. And are you confident uh, that that's going to be uh, a good way to get people not only to vote, but also feel that they can trust their votes and how it was counted? Well, one of the things I will tell anyone out there, and, and obviously COVID is a concern and people uh, want to be able to trust mail-in voting, but the truth is you can't. I mean, let's take, for example, to, uh, last year, Chris Murphy's ballot was thrown out. Uh, for those that don't know, he voted by mail and the local election official threw his ballot out because he didn't return his when they did a canvas. And so when it comes to voting by mail, the, the reality is um, you, it's not a guarantee that your vote is actually going to count. In the primary, we saw 300 voters ballots who were signed and dated on time didn't get to the town hall in time. And so the only way to guarantee that your vote 100 per percent counts is to vote in person. Now, obviously, that's not going to be the case for someone that may be worried about COVID or has a, a, an underlying condition and they're afraid of exposure. And I completely understand that. But, but it, there is a real possibility of massive election chaos based on, on the idea that the Democrats are pretending that voting by mail is as equal and secure as voting in person. And the only other thing I want to touch on, and I, and I think uh, Nancy Donaro touched on this, is the Democrats are not talking about their failures in Connecticut when they're talking about the state Senate or their state House elections. They're only talking about federal issues. In fact, most of them are violating election law because they're using state money and talking about federal candidates or federal topics. Because at the end of the day, the Democrats in this state cannot run on any success that we've had. And so they want you focused on federal issues when they have nothing to do with what's happening in Hartford. I was going to go to break, but I think Nancy DiNardo needs to weigh in on that can of worms there. <laughs> yes, I think that is a typical Trump uh, comment. The Democrats have done well in Connecticut. I mean, uh, look how well... Connecticut is as far as handling COVID. It's one of the best states in the country. And we, we have, have the our highest death rates in the country, Nancy. I'm sorry? We have the fourth highest death rate. Is that trying to interrupt me? let her finish. <laughs> I'm sorry? Nancy, go ahead. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, I forgot what I was going to say on that. Um, about the absentee no. ballots and why you feel that that is a good system and that there isn't massive fraud as JR was. No, I, I, I don't think so. Yes, you're going to have some problems. But if you look at Oregon, I, I think it was Colorado, um, states that have used this regularly and it's like a million to one where you have mistakes that are made. Um, no, and I was also talking about the uh, uh, up in the legislature that um, besides us being, you know, one of the best in, uh, states as far as uh, COVID, um, we, our rainy day fund is so solid that 
after COVID, we should be able to still have some good uh, economic recovery because of the Democrats. Okay, we're going to go to turn our attention when we come back specifically to the presidential race. That's when we come back. Plus, what are the issues that are most important to Connecticut voters when deciding which candidate they will get their vote? And, of course, if you've missed any of our broadcasts, you can always watch past episodes of Face the State on YouTube. We'll be right back.